Thanks a lot, Steve. Well, it's the sound that every new parent dreads. Mm, get used to it, Cam. Mm. Yep. <laughs> no, you can't put your fingers in your ears. It doesn't go away as easily as that. I'm sure it's cute when it's your own baby. <laughs> Yesterday we reported on the new research saying the babies should be left for 20 minutes to cry themselves to sleep, and we got an absolutely massive response. We sure did. Many of you were like Vanessa, who said, it were, I was up five to six times a night with my third child at five months of age. Then I discovered the sleep training techniques. In a week, I had a delightful, happy, rested baby who virtually stopped fussing. He became such a joy to us and so easy that we're now planning our fourth child. Well, that sounds perfect, doesn't it? But there were even more responding, respondees like Leslie, who, Leslie, who said that babies always, always have a reason to cry. And leaving a child to cry for 20 minutes could be dangerous. Babies need someone to show them that there is someone there and to reassure them they're not alone. All the research in the world would not make me suddenly change my instincts. Well, the experts are just as divided. Psychologist Kimberly O'Brien is in favour of controlled crying and sleep sister Helen Stevens is dead set against it. And good morning to both of you. Um, now, Kimberly, if I can start with you, we should just set this up and you can mm -hmm. explain for us exactly what controlled crying is. Okay, so thinking about 20 minutes as you talked yesterday, I think is a little bit maybe at the extreme end of controlled crying mm -hmm. because there's different ways to approach it. You can look at it with just five minute intervals going in and checking. You can stand at the door with the, you know, the door ajar and just hushing the child to let them know that you're present. And you can then go back again every like two to five minutes after that. But for most parents, it's about lying in bed, listening to the cry and deciding whether it's an exhausted cry, whether the baby's going to go back to sleep, or whether it's a distressed cry and whether they have to go in and actually check on the child and see whether they need a nappy change or, or feeding. Okay. And, and Helen, can we get your response to that? That seems fair enough. It does seem fair enough. I suppose my, my thoughts on that would be um, control crying the way many people do it isn't as a response base, it isn't responding when the child's becoming distressed, it's more when, they're, when the time, when the clock says they can go back in, which concerns me about um, tapping into their own intuition by sitting and listening to them. You can respond to them, there are ways to respond to them that doesn't rely on a clock and it feels much better for the child. So Helen, you, you're yes. saying that uh, essentially that if a baby cries it's always a sign of some type of distress and that the parent should always respond. They should respond, but they don't necessarily have to go and rescue the baby. They can respond in a way according to what the child's telling them. So if, they're, um, if it's a small, grizzling, fussing, you leave the child alone, let them have some space to do it for themselves. But when they're crying, a distressed cry, they're indicating to us that their emotional state has moved beyond that of what they can control themselves. And as, as they're containing vessels, as their parents, we respond to it and offer them some support. We don't have to go and pick them up and uh, over nurture them, but we can offer them support of being with them according to what they tell us. So it's very individualised. So Kimberly, you're mm. a mother of one, You've, you have been through this. So, yes. yeah, and there is obviously times when a baby needs help and that's why it's crying. Sure. So how, how do you identify the times when it's okay in your mind to, to leave the baby cry itself to sleep? Yeah, I think it's important to look from the parent's perspective and sometimes it's the parents that are struggling the most with those guilt-ridden thoughts that I should be there, I wonder what's happening, maybe they're cold, you know, so it's good to check on the baby but usually after they've gone back to sleep, so then hopping out of, the, out of bed so you can go back to sleep feeling calm and relaxed to know they're fine, they're comfortable, they're warm. And um, as a parent, I think that just takes a little bit of practice to know that over time, maybe one or two days, this will become routine. The baby will sleep through the night. They wake up a lot happier and, and parents can sleep through the night as well. Mm -hmm. But a lot of um, people who emailed us yesterday, Kimberly, said it isn't mm -hmm. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. That almost sounds like a fairy tale compared to what a lot of people's experience yeah, has so. been. And, and they just find, you know, it, it can go on for day upon day upon day. Yeah. Everyone's sleep deprived then. Sure. What happens if your baby doesn't respond to control crime? What, what then? Yeah, there's some great services out there like Tresillion in New South Wales, which is a, a live-in place for maybe a week for mums to go in and just settle their child and to get some professional help and suggestions on how to do that so that they're not the ones making the judgment call when they're feeling stressed and frazzled themselves. 
but it, it is a family issue so sometimes siblings aren't sleeping and they've got to get up and go to school the next day but I think it's important to think about controlled crying as helping a child to sleep or learn how to sleep and that's a transition that all kids need to learn otherwise over time you know they may be five or six and still unable to sleep in their own bed so it's a short-term um, transition and over the long term there's some great gains in that. H Helen I guess uh, what most people would like uh, as an ideal situation is that they, they end up with a baby that after a little bit of practice the baby has a sleep routine that allows everybody in the house to get some rest. Uh, do you find that using your method that the baby falls into a routine and that they're crying only when they do need some attention? Yes we do. We offer, we don't just talk about a baby in their sleep, we talk about a family at the safe sleep space approach that my co-partner Cindy and I have is that you set up a baby's day, their whole pattern, you don't, it doesn't have to be inflexible but it considers the entire family and it, as Kimberly said, the siblings, you need to take into account everybody in the household. That way you can set up um, settling strategies with a family that works for that family and it's not based on a clock or a timing it's about listening to your individual child and responding to them but not over responding exactly what Kimberly is saying but certainly not on a timed basis. Thank you Helen. Uh, Kimberly just quickly your, your side is the controversial side of the mm. debate. Do you find that uh, people are, are quite uh, vitriolic in their response when you tell them that you do controlled play? Sure. Controlled play? Well, it can be quite an extreme response. Sometimes people say it's like child abuse or, you know, mm. it can raise, you know, huge debates. And um, I think parenting is just an individual case-by-case -case thing. Um, and parents don't need to be extreme in their responses to controlled crying. Just give it a go. If it works for you, fantastic. If it doesn't, then maybe there's other methods that are going to be more effective. But, you know, 80% of people, apparently, according to research by the Children's um, Research Association at the Children's Re uh, Royal the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne with Dr. Harriet um, Hispeth said that 80% of children actually do respond to controlled crying techniques, so it's worth a try. Right. Okay, well, and the debate can continue. It does. So some people even blaming uh, mental problems down the path in yeah. adult life on the fact that controlled crying was used early on. It's a, it's a very heated, and uh, I'm not sure that we've come up with the answers, but we do respect both of your opinions. Thank you, Helen, and thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you.